welcome to another edition of the brand called you i brought you some really really incredible people and today i bring someone who i respect a lot who's achieved a lot in the corporate world and as an entrepreneur atul garg welcome to the show thank you very much uh, atul is the founder of sing x which is uh, the smartest way to send money overseas atul has come to us today from singapore um, sing x was also awarded as one of the best uh, fintech startups in singapore by the president of singapore he has worked for american express and bank of america and of course he's an engineer from pilani and from iim ahmedabad so atul tell me a little bit about your early life so i st- i started my career as an engineer worked on the shop floor uh, and decided that engineering is not for me went and did an mba and then joined uh, the last part of my career spent in financial services so i learned uh, uh, banking at bank of america and during those early days you know you got the full spectrum of the bank so i was fortunate to learn everything about banking and then i moved to american express where i spent the majority of my corporate career and i learned the art of building consumer franchises the art of creating and keeping customers as we called it and um, then more recently uh, i've always liked to innovate and which is why uh, we set up uh, sing x wonderful so after such a successful corporate career you could have really put your feet up and done so many other things what made you decide to become an entrepreneur so i i have always wanted to innovate uh and what better place to innovate than uh, in a, uh, than in an industry where i've spent a lifetime correct right? uh, and maybe i should have done this much earlier but as a single parent i took my responsibility quite seriously and once my children were grown up it was the right opportunity uh, fintech was just uh, about uh, you know beginning and uh, we came across this creative idea mm-hmm. and we decided we'll just go for it wonderful so let's move on to singex a uh, fascinating name uh before i ask you about the venture what is fintech i mean you know thousands of people will listen to you and me speak and see us everyone talks fintech what is fintech so this uh, i mean that's a great uh, question so typically when you look at a bank a bank performs three functions common sensically the uh, you can deposit your money with a bank you can take loans from the bank or a bank offers payment services now if you if you think uh, think about it there's no reason why these three different products should sit under one corporate entity because it may not be the most efficient way of uh, running business so fintech uh fintech companies are companies which are using the power of technology to change the way financial services are delivered to uh, the consumer uh so that's in a nutshell what fintech is about okay. so that's an interesting segue to my next question what is singex so um as the name represents uh, right? so one of the things with the big which, which the big banks have so let me talk about the name for a moment in our tagline um the name uh, the name is important right because if we're going to take away business from banks then people have to have trust so we chose the name sing x simply because sing stands for singapore which represents reliability efficiency trust and x stands for exchange or the new order of things our tagline is cross borders with us mm-hmm. so like we spoke earlier a bank does three different things deposits loans and payments so we have decided to specialize in payments and within that cross border payments where people uh, pay a lot of money and it's very complex to do cross border payments mm-hmm. so sing x does cross border payments in fact we are now operational in three countries in singapore and hong kong and australia and we make payments from these countries to 40 countries across the globe and we'll be adding many more countries wow and our core value proposition for the consumer is that uh, we are much cheaper much more transparent uh, than the banks 
we do instant payments it can take sometimes 2 to 3 days for a payment through a swift network to reach uh, the destination and we offer the people the convenience of an app where within a few seconds you can be done with your payment and people love that mm-hmm. of course we're adding many many more products in cross border payments but that's the core of what we do so atul tell me you know uh, over the last 10 12 years disintermediation seems to be the order of the day what singex is doing seems to be like a disintermediation of the payment space in the banking sector would that be correct it is it, it is and uh, so you know in many ways if you look at it conceptually the whole internet of things is is basically about disintermediation and i personally believe that uh, the supply chain has accounted for a completely disproportionate part of the overall revenue pie and what what is happening now is that it's time uh, that the the consumer got better value and we are seeing as consumers better prices on various goods and more importantly i think the or equally importantly uh, the producer is getting more for their produce so I'll, so so a farmer for example uh, you know uh, selling a product uh, if the ultimate product sells for 10 dollars maybe the farmer only makes one mm. with the balance nine going to the supply chain now the consumers buying the product at 5 the supply chain gets only 2 and the farmer gets 3 and that's what this whole thing is about and we are doing that in a small way in financial services so which means that people who are sitting in the middle yes. their fat margins are getting squeezed absolutely okay. and the chain is reducing direct to consumer wonderful so you know you just spoke of singex being in three countries uh, sending good sending money to 40 countries you're launching more products as the founder of singex what is your vision for singex so we uh, we want to be a pan asian company operating in multiple markets uh, offering incredible value to the consumers and it's not just uh, savings i think it's all about offering people convenience okay. so what what i call the unparalleled consumer journey which means that uh, that's where we use technology to continuously simplify life uh, you know for people and then of course uh, what is traditionally called after sales service or customer service where we have to be there for the consumer whenever they need us and to to respond very very quickly to the consumer mm-hmm. so that's our core the core value which we are delivering to people very interesting and two large countries which have a lot of inefficiencies in the banking systems in in terms of large amounts of margins being taken away by the middlemen are india and china why are you not present in these two countries somewhat more difficult to uh, to enter these countries so you're absolutely right so when we conceptualized singex and cross border payments uh, the thought process was that if money has to flow let's say from india to china the process is that the indian rupee will get converted to the us dollar the us dollar or a swift pipe will flow to china on the chinese side the us dollar will be converted to renminbi and the renminbi then will be delivered to the receiver and it's a completely inefficient uh, process in terms of time of delivery costs because there's multiple currencies so ultimately the idea is to have pools of currency imagine you have two bowls in one bowl you have rupees and in one bowl you have renminbi and it's just dipping into those bowls and paying people on both uh, both sides so that's where we ultimately want to get uh, we've chosen uh, you know let's say the financial centers to start with and our ultimate objective is to get into some of the larger markets and i guess the regulator must be very very different in terms of thought processes in these very large countries so 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 that's one of the one of the things about the whole print tech industry that we are highly regulated and we are regulated because of money laundering uh, issues and compliance issues so we must comply with the regulations in every market that we operate in in fact that's one of the challenges in asia for example where uh, where you don't have any one large homogeneous market and different countries think differently for different reasons right 
Uh, it's much easier, for example, to do business in Europe, which is one uniform market, or the US, which is one large market. Mm -hmm. But then Asia represents different opportunities, as we know. Very interesting. So, Atul, tell me, you know, uh, you are entirely dependent on the digital economy of the world because you need the swiftness with which you are working. From a fintech perspective and from a Singex perspective, what is happening to the global digital economy? As I said, the, I mean, uh, in my view, this, the supply chain is being uh, compressed. And as a result of that, both the consumer and the manufacturer are coming closer uh, to each other and making more money in the bargain. Mm -hmm. I think that's what this whole uh, digital economy is, is about. Okay. And uh, I always say this, that, you know, it's not that, so Amazon, we all know, is a very successful company. Now, it's not that the goods which are sold on Amazon are, uh, you can only get at Amazon. You can get, it, get them at 100,000 other websites across the world. So why does everybody go to Amazon? Because they have, they've used data to understand a consumer's needs. They make life simple. Everybody wants uh, simplicity, right? And that's you know, coming back to that whole customer journey piece. And then the after sales service, which is the customer uh, experience or the customer service that we deliver. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And tell me, you know, again, this is the age of millennials. Millennials are very, very tech savvy. And, you know, if you're in Singapore and Hong Kong and Australia and in the region that you live and work in, there's a lot of movement of people across the ASEAN and Southeast Asian countries. How are millennials changing the way you do business? So they are, uh, I think they are directly adopting uh, the digital economy. Uh, so uh, to give an example, you know, the check was invented in um, somewhere in, in the West. And payments still very recently, all of us made payments by checks uh, in the US and uh, Europe. If you, uh, if you look at economies like Korea and uh, Japan also, they don't have any checking system. There are no checkbooks in Japan. Really? So, so, what, uh, so similarly, uh, so uh, what's happening is that, uh, that the millennial will leapfrog the traditional way of uh, financial services and directly go into the digital financial services, whether offered by a bank or by a fintech company. So, very interesting. So, Atul, one, one more question on Singex before I move to the next segment. You are a professional manager. You've set up Singex. How did you fund Singex? So, we've had, uh, we've had a few rounds of funding and we've been fortunate. So, we've actually uh, high net worth individuals have funded us and we've raised quite a decent sum of money and we are well funded. Uh, we uh, we also believe, so, un, so this is uh, unlike other digital companies in the digital economy that we have to, we have to scale and we have to deliver profit. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we are looking at growth and profitability at the same time and that never comes easy. Mm. Very true. So let's move on to uh, your new avatar as a startup entrepreneur. My first question to you is that should a startup entrepreneur go solo or should they have a co-founder? It always helps to, uh, to kind of have a a co-founder. It depends on, I think each one has to evaluate what their strengths are. And I, I, I would say that for a startup to succeed, I mean, uh, I call it the principle of the three eyes, right? So the first one is that you must be able to think around the bend and to innovate. Uh, so if one individual can do this to answer your question, then there's no reason to have a second founder, but for an individual, if you, if you have complementary skills, then you can have more than one founder. Mm -hmm. You can have the greatest innovation on earth, but then you need to be able to influence people around you. Uh, in our, our case, for example, the regulator or an investor to invest money. 
because unless we're able to influence people on uh, our innovation, we can never really, uh, you know, get what we want. And ultimately, it's all about implementation. You can have the greatest idea, you can have all the funding in the world, but unless we can implement our idea, and as we spoke earlier, scale and, uh, uh, you know, become profitable at the same time, I think those are the recipes of success for a startup. So if one individual has it, he, he can do it on his own, otherwise, maybe partner with somebody. Wonderful. So the three I's of uh, Atul are innovate, influence and implement. Absolutely. Wonderful. Very nice. So again, Atul, based on your own learnings of building SIGX and you know, you've seen a lot of challenges. I'm sure you know a lot of startup entrepreneurs who made mistakes. What according to you are some of the basic mistakes a lot of startup entrepreneurs make? I think the, uh, the first thing is that people jump into, uh, most people have good ideas. Some execute them well, some, you know, some who don't execute them well kind of drop off at that stage. So you can build a website, you can have a very good product. You must have a clear idea in terms of how to scale uh, a business. Correct. Uh, and to scale it efficiently. So uh, I think without this, especially with the way the world is going now, uh, we're very difficult to, to kind of continuously keep raising money uh, with promises for the future. Okay. And you spoke of scaling up. So my next logical question is, when should a startup start to scale up? But I would guess from day one, okay, because ultimately it's all about, uh, you know, if you're direct to consumer, then uh, you have to get consumers on your books. Mm -hmm. Those consumers have to be loyal and active with you. They have to generate revenues for you. So it has to be right from the, the very okay. beginning. Okay. And my next question to you on startups would be that, you know, you said you've done, gone through a few rounds of funding. At what stage? Should a startup entrepreneur look for external funding? I, uh, I mean, I may not be the most competent person to answer that mm -hmm. question because it may vary by uh, by the need of sure. an uh, individual. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, my my view is that uh, the less you raise, the better it is for the company mm -hmm. because the tighter the ship uh, you run. It's a very interesting observation because, you know, you know on my show, we've had hundred over a hundred entrepreneurs and I get very interesting views. Someone says, raise as much money as, as you can. And a lot of others say, don't be in a hurry. So uh, I now understand that you are in the cap of take your time. Absolutely. And don't be in a hurry. Absolutely. So I thought I'm going to move to the third part of my show, which is some personal questions for you. My first question to you would be, that in a, in, a, in a successful career, successful life, a great startup that you started off on, have there been any people who had a strong influence on you? And if yes, what have been your learnings from them? So I personally do a lot of spiritual reading and, uh, and uh, I believe that we learn from every interaction and uh, some of the people who have influenced me, some of my biggest learnings or the, I could say one, one single biggest learning has been that we need to be better today than we were yesterday, every day of our lives. And uh, because uh, there is no other uh, recipe for uh, success. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so I would say that's been uh, that's been my single biggest learning from uh, you know uh, from what I've read and the people I've interacted with, which is to become a better individual. So to be day. better today than we were yesterday, every day of our lives. Mm -hmm. So uh, somebody who runs the Olympics aspires to win the gold medal not just once, 
but to win it time and time again. Correct. And that requires continuous practice and continuous self-development. Very well said. So my next question to you would be, what would be three words that define Atul? I would say somebody who can think around the bend, mm -hmm. uh, somebody who can focus and somebody who can implement. Right, I think that's the reason for such amazing success Singh X is seeing already. My next question to you Atul is on failure. And I ask this question from all my guests. And that's because in India particularly and in Asia in general, we don't teach children it's okay to fail. As a result of which, by constantly being told you have to come first, you have to be ahead of the queue, it manifests itself in our behavior pattern. So my car must be right in front of the traffic light. And an aircraft full of Indians lands and everyone knows there's only one door, but everyone must get out first. And yet we fail a lot. So my question to you is, what have been some of your learnings from some of your mistakes or your failures? So, you know, the Indian education system taught us to be analytical, to do math at very high speed, especially yeah. engineers, mm. maybe even to think around the band. Mm. It never taught us the principles of leadership. And it took me decades mm. personally to learn the principles of le leadership and a lot of reading. Mm. Interestingly, from the time we've started Singex, we have banned two simple words in the company. The first word is the word I. Mm. So I get asked, I must have gotten asked 10,000 times, which is normal, Atul, what would you like to do? Mm. Or what, what so I always correct people and say, can you ask that question again? And they say, okay, what should we be doing in a situation like this? And there's a reason for that, because the I, me, my leads to ego and doesn't empower people, doesn't allow them to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. The second word we ban is the word called but. Mm -hmm. And imagine a child coming up to uh, his mother and saying, Mommy, I got an A grade in uh, history. And the mother says, that's very good, but you need to work hard on your math. The challenge with that response is that the child is not complimented. He only hears the second half of the sentence, which is you need to be better in math. Mm. So we try and substitute the word but with the word and. Mm. So the mother, for example, said that, you know, you got an A grade in English. That's fantastic. And you know what? You can actually, uh, you have the potential and you actually have the potential to get an A grade in math as well. And let's work on it together. Very different, uh, you know, construction of the same yeah. sentence. Yeah. And that perhaps empowers our people uh, to uh, to make mistakes, to think. Because there's no individual mistake. If we make a mistake, uh, it's a collective mistake which the company's made. Very interesting. Remember, I and but are banned. And I think the examples you've given are amazing. So I'll have time for a couple of more questions. My next question is that if you were a role model to millions of children uh, who closely followed you and your life choices, what would you change in yourself? I, I think the biggest, so, so, so for me, as I said, and late in life, uh, the biggest learning is that you you can learn from anyone, hmm. including the doorman, on a on a subject on nuclear physics, and you'll be amazed, you know how. So uh, so that's that's one of my biggest learnings. More importantly, I think what what happens is that as human beings, we assume we have a bad interaction, right? Which is could be with another child, could be with a parent or a friend. 
and the human mind actually subsumes uh, or the human mind then just looks at that last interaction and says i don't like this mm -hmm. individual so in fact my biggest learning you know has been that if you're evaluating an individual, mm -hmm. what you need to look at is the 10,000 interactions that you've had with that individual mm -hmm. and not let your mind, uh, you know, just focus on that last interaction, which may not have been up to uh, standard or to what you wanted. Correct. So that's been my single biggest learning. Correct. Correct. So my last question to you, and this question is that after four decades of working and as an entrepreneur, assuming that you had continued to earn the same kind of money, would you have made any different life or career choices? To be honest, the only the, the only area which I which I know is financial services. So I haven't thought beyond that. Mm. Um, but no, I, I so I certainly wouldn't have been an engineer because uh, that was absolutely the wrong choice for me. Mm. Um, maybe I would have chosen financial services again. Okay. Okay. Atul, thank you very much. It's been such a pleasure speaking to you, and I wish SingX lots of success. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Brand Called You podcast. Be sure to visit tbcy.in to join the conversation, access show notes and discover fantastic bonus content. You can follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Simply search for The Brand Called You. Thank you and see you next week.